Hello everyone and welcome to another motorcycling video. This is called Taking a Ride Part 1 and there are three or four, maybe five more parts in this series. Um, so to set the scene, it's um, Sunday the 22nd of October and it's about, I think it was about 2.30 in the afternoon. I just decided I'd go for a ride around town on my spider and uh, I clicked the camera onto the uh, bracket on the left hand rear view side mirror and set off. Um, to give you a bit more context, my motorcycle is a 2012 Can Am RT Limited. That's one of the last years, I think, in which the 998 or 1000cc, it was a marketed engine with the five speed semi automatic transmission, was um, built. Not long after that, I think in about 2014, they switched to a from a triple, a, a, sorry, a twin engine to a triple engine with a 1330 capacity uh, displacement. I think is the word we use, and a um, six-speed semi-automatic transmission. When I say it's semi-automatic, I mean that um, you have to use a uh, switch with your thumb to change up the in through the gears from one to five in my case or one to six in the newer models case but to change down you have two options you can use your pointer finger on a switch on the back of the handlebars or you can um, simply close the throttle off and by uh, reducing speed by touching the brake and the bike gradually slowing down the uh, transmission will change down by itself taking you down through the gears and also it will match revs for the appropriate engine speed to the uh, bike speed. Um, so that's how that part of it works. Now um, those who know my motorcycle videos know and will know any of my videos but particularly the motorcycle ones will know that I don't have a script and that the audio is recorded later on. I have been looking into getting I think what's called a lavalier or lavalier uh, microphone to plug into some of my cameras um, so I can record while I'm riding uh, and get one of those dead cat they're called um, fur covers the fluffy covers it sits over the microphone so it doesn't pop but I haven't yet done that um, a couple of my GoPro cameras that sit in um, cases don't have a place where you can then plug in the microphone because the um, cameras all have microphones built into them, uh, the DJI action camera I have does have a place where you can plug in a USB-C connection, um, which could have a microphone, and you could record. But it was, it all, sorry, it also has uh, several well-built, uh, several built-in microphones that generally pick up the sound pretty well. Obviously, they don't pick up the sound so well if you're trying to talk while you're wearing a helmet and you're travelling at 80 or 90 or 100 kilometres an hour. And it's also a windy day, and that was the case uh, on this day. So uh, I have muted the uh, sound that the microphone on the camera did pick up because it was very windy and all you would pick up is the sound, is the wind noise, some engine noise. And because I was playing music through my FM transmitter device, um, I suspect that I would have some issues with copyright with uh, YouTube so you just get my commentary. Now as I said I gen generally record the commentary later using a blue uh, microphone. The blue is the brand of microphone which I just plug into a USB port. I don't generally have a script so whatever it is that I feel like talking about on that day I just uh, talk about it and ramble on about whatever it is that I'm interested in and uh, I guess I should have said a little bit earlier, if you're not interested in my opinions or what it is I'm talking about, then by all means, simply just turn down the volume and enjoy the scenery. Uh, if you'd like to comment on anything I have to say, then please feel free to do so in the comments. If you like the video, that's fine. If you want to subscribe to the channel, that's also fine. I'm not uh, touting for, mem for subscribers and I don't have any financial or pecuniary arrangements with anybody that necessarily profits me if you do subscribe i'm just suggesting you do it because you're interested in the content um, so that's uh, the context in terms of the bike uh, it was about 20 22 degrees on uh, sunday but as i said very very windy 
and in places uh, the wind was blowing directly in my face and even with the screen at its highest point I found the wind in some cases was getting up trying to get underneath the helmet and pull it back against my uh, the strap on my chin so I had to sort of duck my head down a little bit uh, other times the wind was blowing directly uh, almost at right angles to how I was riding so despite the weight and size of this bike the wind was doing its best in some cases to sort of blow me off the track that I was trying to keep or off the road a little bit um, and that can be even with all the safety systems and the spider that can be a little disconcerting. Now I started out driving out of Goulburn in a southerly direction towards uh, Canberra and then took a turn off from there um, and then drove onto the Braidwood Road and was heading east. And so by the end of this first clip, I had uh, travelled a good distance. I can't tell you how many kilometres. I wasn't paying that much attention to the kilometres uh, or even the total kilometres of the trip, but I was certainly travelling east towards uh, the village of Tarrago, which is about 42 k's, I think, from Goulburn. I hadn't reached there by the end of this clip and I think I may get there by the end of the second clip um, the road the Braidwood Road is the main road east from Goulburn to the coast and in some cases it's in uh, pretty good condition just before you get to Tarrago there's some road work being done to improve part of it but there are other parts of it that are still uh, suffering as a result of heavy rains and damage that occurred late in 2022 uh, and councils and road authorities and so on are still catching up with the repair work that's needed. I always comment on the state of the roads because I think that um, people are interested in that sort of thing and as a motorcyclist the things that I'm interested in are uh, the state of the road in general, whether there are lines marked down the middle of the road, um, whether there are lines marked on the edges of the road, how what the shoulder is like and if there are any of those white, white uh, pla metal or sometimes plastic posts uh, to mark the sides of the road and in parts of this road there are those things and in other parts of the road uh, some of those things are not there. Uh, it always intrigues me that you can go out on these uh, country roads and see those plastic or something, they're either plastic or metal uh, posts bent over almost flat to the ground in some cases and I think you know, who, who decides one day that they're going to just sort of drive 10, 15, 20 k's out of Goulburn, get out of a car and go on a little sort of rampage along the road, bending over all these posts, not realising that they are an important safety feature. At night time, of course, they have the, the ones that are facing you in the direction you're going uh, have the red reflectors on them so you can see that you know you're on the right side of the road for a start. When you see them, you know that's the edge of the road and the ones on the other side of the road have a white reflector on them so that you know that that's the other side of the road. So there are important safety features and the fact that they get bent over is just one of those things that sort of plagues me to wonder why people would do such a thing without necessarily realising just how important they are and especially important to motorcyclists who um, have practically nothing between themselves and the road and in it, on small country roads in particular where if you're not familiar with the road and not familiar with the area you don't know where the shoulder is and you don't know if there's an even shoulder um, at least the guideposts are there to tell you well that's the end that guidepost that's the end of the road be careful where you're going there um, the spider itself is a very easy machine to ride once you learn what you've in order to learn you though you've got to pretty well forget everything you know about riding a two-wheel motorcycle because this is a three-wheel motorcycle it has two wheels at the front and the width of those wheels is almost uh, as wide as a small hatchback car um, and so uh, it takes up almost as much space in a lane as does a small hatchback and consequently you can't lane split and those sort of things you also can't lean the motorcycle uh, this one has, I think, what is called wishbone suspension uh, and coil springs as well, I think. Um, and so each wheel is independently suspended, um, but it is quite a different exercise. You have to actually lean your body into the corner or the curve that you're going into rather than lean the bike into it and steer the bike by pushing on the outer hand of the curve and pulling on the inner hand of the curve. So if you're turning left, you would push strongly with your right hand and pull just as strongly with your left hand 
uh, to make you go around the curve, but at the same time leaning your body uh, forward slightly and towards the left if you're making a left-hand turn. It generally seems to be easier to turn left on this bike than it does to turn right. I suspect that there are two reasons for that. One is that uh, probably the camber of the road, and the second is uh, because when you're making a left-hand turn, you don't always have to make a full 90-degree turn, whereas if you make a right-hand turn, you generally have to make a full 90-degree turn in order to negotiate either the traffic island in the middle of the road or make sure you don't cross the double lines or uh, things like that. Those who are familiar with my uh, channel uh, will know that I, uh, when I'm motorcycling, I try to talk about motorcycle things and motorcycle related things that to do with riding the motorcycle, safety with the motorcycle, financing, uh, things like insurance and all that sort of stuff. Um, I should say, as a point of clarification, now that I'm not a motorcycle safety expert, I have no qualifications in teaching people to ride motorcycles. I've ridden them a lot during my life and I've cracked up, racked up probably close to 300,000 kilometres on motorcycles with mostly without any great dramas but that doesn't mean that I'm in any position to tell anyone else how to do things um, other than to say ride safely. Uh, if you subscribe to my channel you'll find there are also I hope other things that you might be interested in, running videos, uh, and a variety of other things that I just do uh, basically for my own entertainment and if other people get pleasure out of it that's fine if, if there's a, um, you know any, at any point anything you want to comment on uh, then as I say feel free to do so I will acknowledge your comment when I become aware of it and um, hopefully we can engage in some dialogue and feedback um, and share some thoughts about whatever it is that you have raised. On the subject of motorcycles, as well as this uh, Can-Am Spider, which I should explain uh, for, for those who are watching outside of Australia, that uh, because it has handlebars and an open frame, I think is the way, how the way it's described, and not an, or an open body, it is classified as a motorcycle in Australia, despite the fact that it has two wheels at the front, and uh, you must wear a helmet to ride a Spider. You must take a pre-rider safety training course and in fact the newer versions so even the older versions are not learner legal the Riker which is also made by Can-Am which comes I think in two or three different configurations a 600 and a 600 900 900 sport I think the 600 is learner legal the 900 and the 900 um, sport are not learner legal um, to the best of my knowledge all other th three-wheeled uh, trike-type machines, including things like the Piaggio MP3s and the um, Harley-Davidson things like an ice cream truck, uh, that, and I think even some of those uh, German-made um, trikes with the engine at the back are uh, classified as motorcycles, but in some states, I believe in some states, you may be able to ride them. You still have to wear a helmet, but you may be able to ride them uh, on a car license. Uh, it's not the case in New South Wales, as far as I know. And New South Wales is the state where I live, and as far as I know, it's also not the case in Tasmania, where I often spend a bit of time. Uh, talking about motorcycles, I also have a um, Suzuki Bergman 650 AN Executive Scooter, which is um, a little bit different, I acknowledge, from the... Um, Spider. Before I had the Spider, I had a Kawasaki Vulcan Voyager 1700 in which I'd racked up about 100,000 kilometres and I got to the stage where it was getting a bit heavy for me to pull up off the stand and ride around in town. It was okay out on the open road, but the town where I live is full of, like every other town, intersections, but it's also full of roundabouts and negotiating the roundabouts sometimes in a stop-start traffic was proving to be a bit of a challenge given the weight of that bike, which is 400 odd close to 400 kilos I think wet um, and so I wanted to keep riding so I decided it was time to move from two wheels to three wheels and uh, I made an arrangement with my son to sell him the uh, Kawasaki uh, and um, put some extra money towards the Can-Am Spider. Uh, 
All right, well, I think that's pretty well all the things I wanted to cover in this sort of rambling video that sort of introduces you to the series of uh, bike uh, rides. As I said, I'm heading east of Goulburn towards the village of Tarrago, and then I think when I get to Tarrago in the next um, clip, I will be making a turn northeast uh, up what's called the Neriga Road. And I'll get to all that in the next video, but thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this bit of the countryside and a brief tour of around as, you, as I was leaving Goulburn. And I look forward to talking to you again when I'm making part two of this video, which I hope will be in the next day or two. Thank you for watching and please feel free to comment on anything that has uh, sparked your interest.